Super fresh, super nice, HB goodness. Hey guys, welcome to Rollage Biology. If you're new, super fresh that you're here, glad that you're here and everything. And of course, to everybody else, welcome back. I haven't done a live stream for a while actually, but I got this new super fresh microscope. So it's actually going to be uh, the first time that I've used it on video. I've used it a few times actually now and... Man, I wish I got this a long time ago, seriously, I'm not gonna lie. It's absolutely brilliant. Like, it just feels so uh, natural. And um, yeah, like full depth of field, so to speak. And it's just absolutely a breeze to work with. Seriously, I wish I'd have done this like so, so long ago. It's not normal. So this evening, I'm gonna basically build up this uh, Valju 72. Uh, the timing mechanism of it. I'm not going to do the chronograph part because I always do it in two stages anyway. So I'm just going to basically build up all of the watch side of it, get it functioning, get it running, etc. Oil it. And um, of course, you guys can see it as well. Hey Tom, glad that you're here, mate. It's nice uh, that you've stopped by just in time. But uh, yeah, it's been a strange week. Like a, a really strange week, actually. I had some really strange weirdness going with my YouTube channel. It's really strange. So, I think it was like three days ago or something. I was online and I looked at my YouTube channel and I had like so many subscribers or whatever. And I had a shower and by the time I came out, I gained like about 50 or 60 subscribers. Which I thought was like really strange. It didn't make any sense to me whatsoever. And then the next day, the same thing happened again. And I went up to around 2030 or something. And I was looking at the statistics, but it made, uh, yeah, it made no logical sense to me. So I think they were fake. Um, and subsequently also I noticed then the day after, and then the day after that in two separate stages, YouTube also removed them. So my first thought was, man, YouTube have finally taken my uh, channel seriously, super fresh. But no, I was wrong. Uh, that was not uh, that was not the case. So yeah. Hey Bruce, glad that you're here. So yeah, it's been an interesting uh, interesting week, uh, and at least I got the audio working this time as well from the get go. I made sure that I turned it on. So I've got this Valju seventy two. I've got it all cleaned. It's all really super good to go. And I got this new, like I said, I got the new microscope and everything. So you guys are pretty seeing what I'm seeing. So with the video, yeah, so I'm using this with like a Barlow lens on the bottom. So I get a better depth of field uh, from what I'm seeing. But you're seeing exactly what I see, but yours is a little bit tighter. And as far as when I've looked into it and I've researched it, yeah, there's nothing better than I can do in regards to the videos that are out there, unless you want to spend like two grand on a video, on a camera, which uh, is not going to happen, guys. I'm not that rich. Far from it. <laughs> but this is also still super fresh because, I mean, you can zoom in. Like I said, I mean, I can see it on the monitor here as well. So, I mean, you, I mean this is not even fully zoomed in. I mean, you can really, really get like super on this, you know, which is uh, not necessary. But uh, yeah. So like I said, it's the first time that I used it on video, so bear with me, but um, yeah, it should be right. So like I said, this watch has completely been cleaned and uh, it's ready to go. So first thing that I'm going to do, which I always do, I'm going to do the um, capstones for the balance. So uh, you see, seriously, I've got so much eyesight here that I can see and for the first time as well, it's going to really help with the videos because you guys can now actually see this a lot more closer up as well, which is really nice. So let me just remove that out of the way. I can pop him down here and then I believe I can focus on him as well. If I focus, he should focus on the camera as well, pretty much. Just move him up a little there.
Yeah, that's pretty good. I'm happy with that. It is, man. It's super serious. <laughs> oh, man. But uh, I've been in trouble this week. I got barred. Seriously. I was actually a little bit shocked about it myself. But I got barred from the uh, Omega forums. The fuckers. Shit, I shouldn't say that. But uh, they barred me. So I went and put up a, a link to the new uh, short that I did. Man, those guys, they went like super ballistic over it in a really negative, nasty way, which was not fresh. And I was not feeling that in any shape or form. Um, yeah, it was not, uh, it was not, uh, not nice, Re like really not nice. And basically, um, yeah, like I said, I posted a link to like a short that I did, which I thought was quite funny. And on another forum, I got really, really positive feedback, but these guys, no, man, they were no sense of humor whatsoever. And then they were like, oh, you're just spamming. And, and then there was one guy who like was got really super into it. And he was like going into old posts that I'd actually made as well. And he was basically uh, saying like, oh, yeah, this is what you've done before. You've done it like this, etc., etc." And um, yeah, he uh, complained to the admins and without any kind of like warning or anything like that in any shape or form. I just got banned. And I've had that account for eight years, man. Screw them. Uh, I was actually, uh, actually shocked about it, to be honest. Didn't think it was nice. Okay, so I'm just removing this capstone. I'll change the camera over in a second as soon as I can get it out of this damn bottle. If it pops. Um, but I don't know if you've seen the video that I was talking about, but, uh, yeah, like I said, completely baffled that they would bar me without any kind of warning whatsoever, you know, pretty, uh, pretty scandalous, but it is what it is and I'm not going to lose sleep over it. Okay, let me adjust that. <clears throat> So this has already been cleaned, but I want to do some fixer drop on the um, capstone, which is here. And of course, I need to flip it over, get rid of that microscopic fluff. Let's see if you guys can see this nice. If there's anything that's not good about what it is that you see, just please let me know, because like I said, it's the first time that I'm using it on the video and I want to progress with it on the video as well. So it's important to let my ass know. Let me zoom in a bit. Yeah, tell me about it. Seriously, it was like, I think the thing that just I just don't understand is this, and I know Ricky Gervais touched on this once, with the whole, um, he said it's like seeing, being in a supermarket and seeing a sign that somebody's advertising for guitar lessons. And then you ring up that person and basically complain and say that you don't want guitar lessons. And that's the thing, I just don't understand. You know, if, if somebody doesn't want to watch it, just, oh shit, just, uh, I've made a pig's ear of this. Just uh, move on, you know what I mean? I don't understand why you have to basically um, bother watching it, you know? Just move on with life and yeah, I think it's ridiculous. So I'm just going to fix it, drop this again. I've just wiped it off because I made a balls of the oil and I'm not happy with that. It's not acceptable at all. And then I can pop him out again. Oh, damn. My first uh, thank you, Eric. That's uh, super appreciated. I've never actually had one of these before. 
<laughs> I don't know. You didn't have to do that. That's really kind of you, bro. But um, that's a uh, that's a first uh, a first for me. There we go. That's better. But yeah, guys. The other thing that I was saying as well is the um, sometimes it's a bit difficult to talk at the same time as do this. But uh, I'm going to give away that other microscope. I don't know if uh, you guys had noticed that, but I dropped another video earlier last week, I think it was, and I was basically saying that to members of the channel, as I'm super appreciated for all the members that have been out there that I've decided that I'm going to give the old, uh, I'm going to do it as a draw and basically just give the old uh, microscope away to one of the members uh, and also not just the members but also the uh, Patreons as well so it'll be one or the other basically but um, it's one of those things that it's like yeah I could sell it but it's like I'd rather give it away and have somebody have some enjoyment out of it because it's a good scope. There's nothing wrong with it, but I wanted something just a bit more henshi like this thing. And uh, yeah, this thing is definitely um, a lot, a lot bigger, a lot more professional, let's say. And it saves me as well having to mess around, um, doing things on different stations, so to speak. There we go. A little wipe with the Rodico. That's nice, I'm happy with that. Guys, I'm a little conscious that the focus is not amazing, so please let me know because I'm a little conscious that it's not amazing. See, that looks a bit better to me now. So you have to tell me. <laughs> yeah, you got a solid point there, Tom. <laughs> solid point indeed, my man. Okay, let me just quickly do this other one. Where are you? <clears throat> Some people do this at the end, but I prefer to get it away straight from the cleaning machine. Because I see it as well, the balance is already on, so why don't I just do it now, just get it out of the way, and then it's done, you know. Saves, uh, just saves messing around, I think. But I have to be conscious of uh, you guys. There we go. Put it into one side. What's this? I'm a novice hobbyist and I got a scope from Cousins. Light with a 0.5 Barlow seems good enough for the likes of me. Yeah, the Barlow lens makes a really big difference. And if it wasn't for uh, Dayton from I Shoot Watches, I wouldn't have, uh, I really wouldn't have known about this whole Barlow lens business because that's really not my forte. And I have to say that when I look at it with and without that Barlow lens that I got, yeah, you really see a, a, a massive, uh, a massive difference. So I am uh, really appreciated knowing about that. Because yeah, it makes it it does it makes an absolute difference. The field of view that you get is uh, so much better. Okay, more oil. So a little ninety ten on these guys, and you only need a little tiny bit. More than that, my days was non-existent. The only thing I find with this oil, I had a, I had a, one of the Bergeon, I've had two of these Bergeon extra fine precision ones. 
And the only problem is, is they're pretty expensive for what they are and I've broken two already. I mean, it took me a while to break them, but they're so fine. So if you're not careful, they will break. They will, the tips will snap and then they're just completely useless. So I said to myself, I'm not going to get another one just yet. So I've got quite a few fine oilers, which are fine, but I do find that I have to remove just a, especially when doing stuff like a capstone, just need to remove a little bit of oil off. Where are we? There we go. <laughs> Is this a party without Rolex? <laughs> I'm not a super Rolex hater. I just, you know what it is, yeah? It's like some people do think that I absolutely despise Rolex. And the problem is, is like I think a lot of people, it, I, I really respect the brand for what it is. I just don't respect and cannot stand the whole dealership situation and the whole waiting list bullshit. It's that, that's what I cannot stand. And, and the way that it's, Oh yeah, spend 200,000 with us on like jewelry and things like this. And then, uh, yeah, we, we might put you on a waiting list. And, and that's what I don't agree with. I, I don't like that. And I, I think, yeah, it's, it's, it's not cool, man. So that's what I have a problem with. In regards to the heritage and the quality and the craftsmanship, everything. Oh, of course, it's absolutely amazing. I'm not going to deny that. Um, but um, yeah, I'm not a, unfortunately, uh, the way the dealers work, I think it's pretty scandalous, man. It's not cool. It's, it's not uh, it's not fresh in any shape or form. No, sir. It's not. All right, so that's that uh, balance taken care of. So I could just remove this now and just pop it away. So I, I literally just lay him down upside down on a uh, on a cushion. And then he's there until the end, basically. I'll put him to one side with his screw and put a cover on him. Which I'll use this one for now. <clears throat> right. So, first thing, what I need to do, let me just grab something. It was six o'clock. So let's do the barrel because we're going to need that. I've been super good as well. Organized all my parts, completely separated all of the chronos, chrono works. So I've only got the uh, the mainspring. Uh, sorry, the, the timing parts. You know, the only thing that I miss about these live streams is, which is just a bit weird. Well, it's, I mean, I see you guys in the chat, which is super nice, but it's also just a little bit odd, like it feels like I'm talking to myself. It would be nice if it was like an actual um, audio. If you know what I mean. So yeah, like I said, that was really, uh, really strange about that whole subscriber thing. I was weirded out by that. At, at first, like I said, I thought it was something awesome and really cool. And then it turned out to be something completely, yeah, negative. Not cool. Not cool at all. See that little fluff? This is not the best barrel in the world. It's quite a bit of wear. I'm just seeing my break. Okay, I think we are in. Please don't fly across the room on live uh, 
television, so to speak. Okay, I can breathe again. <clears throat> Would there be any discernible benefit in polishing the barrel inside? Uh, to be honest, I think it would be better to actually just replace it because polishing wise, it's plated anyway and you could see it's all worn away. I can see the brass on the bottom. This mainspring doesn't look amazing, I'll be honest with you. This uh, mainspring really doesn't look good. I'm not happy with it. I just feel like it's a little bent. Let's see if I can just get this armory and zoom out. I'm really not happy with this uh, mainspring, guys. It looks like it has a serious kink. I do have some other ones, but I'd rather not have to uh, replace it once it's in. Because this is actually underneath that massive uh, train bridge as well. It's awkward getting this arbor in. It's not easy at all. Come on. Nearly got it. Just can't get it under the bridle.
Welcome to uh, live viewing, guys. I cannot get that in. Sometimes these can be a pain in the arse. But like I said, I'm not happy with this uh, spring. Usually I can just spin it in. This is not wanting to, uh, to go. I'm also not happy with the uh, amount of shavings it's coming off as well. of the Mastercraft winders. No at the moment, the main option seems to be very restrictive and you won't use the most of the set by. I'm going to get a new spring. I'm not happy with this spring. I'm going to remove this spring and uh, pop a new one in. I have got more. I'm not content with it. Thankfully, I have more. Turbo's here. Of course YouTube didn't message you. Why would they? It's only me. You know, what I've been told, right, is that you're supposed to have all of the, um, what is it, notifications on and extra stuff. And uh, I think it's a bit ridiculous, man. Like, if I think if you subscribe to something, you should basically get a notification from it, you know, end up. I don't understand why uh, there should be other channels that you have to go, to go through, so to speak. But I've heard that you have to have all the notifications on your phone on and basically, yeah, everything has to be basically enabled through in and throughout. Okay, so there's the six. Let's try again. Yeah. 
These main, I don't know what it is, I don't know what you guys think, but these mainsprings, they just look a bit crappy. I bought them in bulk. They just look a bit wishy-washy in the middle. This spring is not in. I know it's not in. It's not in. <laughs> it's not in. This is why I don't like doing live streams. <laughs> I don't believe this springs in. Scared to take this thing off because I'm thinking this thing's gonna go damn flying. Because I don't think it's in. Nope. Well, I do apologize, guys. This has not been uh, super fresh in any shape or form. This is not... Uh, definitely not how I've wanted things to go. So you're going to have to bear with me. See, yeah, it looks wonky, man. It was, it wasn't in properly. So now I'm gonna have to uh, wind it in, which is fine, but it's just annoying. And of course it's difficult to show this on the camera. So you're gonna have to go back to me, I'm afraid. Yeah, it's uh, springs they do, they just look a bit iffy. Like I said, I bought them all from the same person. And he says, oh, I have five left. So I said, well, I just said, I'll take them all. So I thought that's fine. Which actually, speaking of which, you know what, I've, in regards to, because I'm a little bit conscious of time as well. I do have more. I can put these on the mains on the winder later on. Then I'm going to be doing some serious editing of this video. I'll tell you that. I'm surprised you guys have still stuck around. All right, let me just jam this in quickly and get it out of the way.
There is a possibility, thinking about it, that they are the wrong springs, but I'd be surprised. I've bought off this guy many times before and I've not had a problem. But it's just interesting because it was just, like I said, like this batch was the, uh, the last of it, so to speak. I must admit, in regards to how springs go in, this does feel a bit more awkward. No, it's the same problem. This is weird. I'm wondering if these springs are not right. This is a little bit peculiar that they both... Uh, that I'm having problems getting them in. As this is my watch, let's just do it like this. The bridles also look very strange. If these do turn out to be wrong springs, then we're in for a problem because I don't have any more. And then that means that the watch is not going to get built. But this is actually my, um, this is my own watch. This is the, remember I did the video a few weeks ago with the white aquagraph? And the uh, the day, not the uh, the Jean Perret. And this was basically my aquagraph that had never that's never been serviced. So I thought, well, I wasn't going to do it at the time. Obviously, I thought it's not going to happen. I ain't got time for that. But then I thought I will do it on a video and I do it on a live stream. But I didn't expect that there was going to be. Well, not problems, but delays, let's say, in regards to things which are relatively straightforward. But at the end of the day, that's also something that I've said before, and it's interesting as well, because I know that uh, Dayton from I Shoot Watches was saying like this. And he was saying to me, oh, yeah, but how cool would it be just to have a, like a video where there's no editing and it's just all run through concurrent and basically you just see it for what it is, etc., etc. And I'm just thinking nobody's going to watch that because things, especially when it comes to watchmaking and building up watches and repairing watches, things take time, you know, and errors can happen and you can have uh, delays and complications, etc., etc. And um, yeah, you know what I mean? It's, it's not something that can just, um, what you call it, just always go perfectly smooth without any kind of hiccup or, or anything that's problematic. So I just don't see how anyone in their right mind would basically sit there and just watch all of that. It doesn't make any sense to me why any, anyone would want to do that. That's crazy. So that was a bit of a disagreement I had with him in regards to that. I thought, no, that's, uh, that's not cool. So what's I won't feel bad if I have a very similar experience doing this for the first time. I bet I will. Oh, yeah, yeah, you will. <laughs> you have a really bad experience. <laughs> if you get it done the first time and everything, then my hat obviously goes off to you because, uh, yeah. Sometimes they can just be a pain in the ass. That's just, yeah, unfortunately how it goes. Sometimes they're a pain in the ass, sometimes they're not. 
But what I don't like about the, the Val 72 in particular is the uh, arbor is massive. That's another problem. It's big. You have a massive head on it and uh, yeah, that's also a, an absolute um, pain in the ass. Because of that. And I must admit it is a little bit strange. Come on, come in for Pappy. And I obviously don't want to break it. Just get some leverage. Give me one second. <clears throat> I want to check one thing. So there's one thing I was just thinking about. Talk amongst yourselves. Talk amongst yourselves. Man, 45 minutes, 45 minutes. Yeah, I get that, Tom, but that's editing, you know what I mean? It's, it's, that's the editing that works with it, because then I just don't believe for a second that people would want to sit there and, and, and watch like three hours of somebody, you know, having a difficult arbor going into a watch, you know what I mean? It's, it's not always, um, it's not always smooth. It is just uh, one of those things. Anyway, while I'm fiddling with this, did you guys see that Rolex thing that I did anyway? Here, while I fiddle with this, have a look if you didn't see it. I still can't believe the Omega guys banned me for that. If anything, I thought they'd be happy. I was saying like that. But also, you know what was weird, yeah? Is that I noticed it on a few comments. Um, people that uh, believed it. That thought it was real. It's not real. 
of course it's not bloody real, it's me talking on it. But then I'm thinking, my editing skills are getting, uh, must be getting better. Okay, so by the looks of things, I finally got this arbor in. Let me just check. Yes. Yes, I see you. You are in. Finally, guys, 45 minutes later for something that should take five. <clears throat> Omega Forums. I've been a member on that uh, forum for eight years, right? What happened was, Turbo, I'm talking to you, seeing as you were late. What happened was, um, I posted that video that I just showed you guys, that skit, that 30, 40 second skit, that Rolex skit. And man, there was like quite a lot of nasty feedback. And at the end of the day, I'm not bothered about that, you know. But what I am bothered about is there was this one guy in particular... And he was super just like, like investigating me or something. It was weird. And like, uh, not, not the nicest of comments, uh, which is fine, you know, everybody to their own, I don't care. But then he was all like, oh yeah, you should be banned, blah, blah, blah. And they get the mods in and everything. And without no warning, without no, uh, what you call it, um, uh, warning or something saying like, hey man, you know, you, you shouldn't, this, is, this could be classed as uh, spamming a bit, you know, blah, blah, blah. Just straight away, man, just banned. And when I checked back to the post, they just said, yeah, you're banned. You know, that, that was it. It said person's banned. And I thought, well, okay, thanks, guys. That's nice. You know, I've had my account since 2015. I mean, okay, it's not like I posted every week or anything, you know, of course not. But still, it's like, come on, man. It's a bit over the top, no? So, uh, yeah, I got banned, man. No, man, it's not super fresh at all. What was he saying? Have you got the arbor in there yet? Yeah, the lesson is don't basically do it live while you've got a shitload of people watching you because it adds exactly more pressure to it because probably if I was on my own, I would have got it in like a million times earlier because it's not like it's the first time I've done it. But I think also these springs, because these springs, I've not used these ones before. They're from a different supplier. And maybe, you know, it was quite tight. And also on the Val 72s, the arbor is really fat. It has a really wide uh, head on it, which uh, is a little bit annoying. So it, they're not, they're never the easiest to do anyway. But um, yeah, it, it got in. I'm trying to get into, uh, make sure I'm in focus on this for you guys. Right, okay, so that's in. So uh, at last, we can finally start moving in the right damn direction. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to do... I don't smoke cigarettes, but I really fancy one now after all the stress. <laughs> Is anybody going to lend me one? Yeah, they don't look great. So it's going to be really interesting actually seeing what this runs like afterwards, you know what I mean? And then I'm going to be annoyed because then obviously if it isn't amazing and it's affecting the amplitude like in a big way, then obviously I'm going to have to uh, remove that spring, get some more springs. And um, yeah, replace it. But I agree with you, Turbo. They uh, certainly didn't look good at all, man. Not fresh. Not fresh at all. Not fresh. Mm. That was my phone, by the way, not my ass. If you heard that. So I just want to get this. So what I'm doing here is I'm just going to flip it over real quick so that I can put in this uh, uh, setting lever. Because I'd rather do this now and get it out of the way. Come on, come to Papi. 
I was going to do this uh, last night, and then I thought, I was literally about to set it all up and everything, and then at the last minute, I was like, no man, I can't do it on a Tuesday night, that's Chrono Glide night, what's wrong with me? I thought, even I want to watch that. Okay, so I basically just pop a finger over this, and then I will uh, nip it up from the... Uh, from the other side. Sometimes it slips. But uh, a bit of luck, I got it first time, so that's nice. Mm. Cool. At least something's gone right, which is really good. Right, let's move on and get this done super quick. No, man. No, I'd be super disappointed with 215. Uh, like 275, 280, I'd be super, that's what I would be aiming for on, uh, on this. 215, hell no. Not after... Um, not after service on 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 a, on a vowel, no. I want um, to uh, about two seventy five, two eighty or something. Even three hundred would be excellent, but like, yeah, I'm not gonna clutch at that. But uh, no, most definitely not two fifteen. Right, I've popped this into a different movement holder because this, this is a proper Valju 72 holder, which is really good, but it works better when the movement's on the other side. So when you're doing this side, it can be a little bit slippy, which is annoying. So I'm swapping over my uh, movement holders. And you guys haven't complained about the uh, quality of the image yet, as far as I can see, which is a good sign. So I'm kind of, kind of happy about that. So I'm thinking that it looks better for you than it does for me. <clears throat> Which is cool, but please let me know if there's any uh, any problems. So I'll pop that barrel in, get him out of the way, and then before I even go into this little journey, I need to do. This is a massive bridge, yeah. So it covers the uh, the train of wheels and also the the barrel as well. So it's a huge, huge bridge. But what they did is on this, man, have you seen the damage on this one as well? Have you seen this? Look at this damage here. I don't know if you can see that, guys. Let me uh, try and zoom in a bit. Yeah, look at that wear. It's really weird how that's happened. I'm not even sure how that's happened. Anyway, so the crown wheel and the uh, click and everything, and the click spring, it's underneath this. So you need to do this first, otherwise, well, yeah, it's going to be a waste of time, basically. And, of course, I have it here. The crown, you have, a, it's two-piece crown wheel, so you've got a crown wheel and you've got the crown wheel core. Held in with two screws, and then you've got a click spring, which is quite small, and then you've got a click as well, and that's also really straightforward. So the first thing that I do... I add a little spot of grease to the bottom of the uh, crown wheel, uh, the crown wheel, just a tiny little bit, one on each side, because it's literally just constantly rubbing on the bottom. looks bigger than what it is, but it's a really small amount. Two twenty, as far as I was told, is good after twenty four hours. So if your watch has been running, let's say for twenty four hours, then it's two twenty. You, you want to see at least two twenty after twenty four hours. Is that what you meant, though, in the beginning with your question? Or did you mean like just based on like a full wind from uh, from new? Because two two twenty after twenty four hours, yeah.
So a little 1300 as well on the inside of this crown wheel, a little on both sides. And then I can pop in that core and then that's held in, like I said, with the two screws as well. It was funny as well, I was talking to the cat earlier on, as I do. And he was like, yo bro, how long are you going to be, you know, because i got to get my food on later and everything. And I was like, oh man, I'll be about an hour. I think it's going to be like an hour live stream, that's it, you know. <laughs> an hour to do an arbor, man. It's not normal. Not normal at all. Come on, man. I still just, like I said, uh, I still disagree with the whole unedited thing. Because I just, I just think there's a lot of, a lot of uh, waffle, so to speak. Another thing as well, uh, what I need to do, which I will do in a second is, now, when you're working on these kind of movements, there's a lot of screws, as you can obviously see here. Yeah? And there's a lot of screws that look really, really similar, but they're actually different sizes. So as I've always said before, and you guys have probably heard me say this, I always put the screws back into the place where they came from. The thing is, you need to remember to unscrew these a little bit once you've basically finished cleaning this uh, movement because they will stick out the other side and you're not going to be able to get this bridge back on. So that's what I'm doing now. Obviously don't unscrew the eccentric screws, whatever you do, because then you're going to cause yourself a massive unnecessary headache. And it's irritating because I've had some watches received where the eccentric screws have been messed with. And then you have to obviously adjust all the timing and that's difficult and it's a pain in the ass and you don't need that in your life. So don't mess with your eccentric uh, screws. You see here, look, I've got no movement. You see this? I have no movement, so it means that I still have got a screw on this side, which is still just touching it. So it's gotta be one of these. Now it's free. So I can nip up this, because I didn't want to tighten these up fully, because I could bend, bend it potentially. And that's not fresh. See, now he's free. Man, you guys are super talkative. I feel, I feel left out. Oh, you mean the lowest that I would personally settle for in my own watch without tearing it apart? 125, man. 125. <laughs> if it runs for two hours, I'm super happy with that. <laughs> until like six months later, until I cannot tolerate it. No, no, I'm joking, I'm joking, I'm joking. <laughs> No, it's, uh, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really curious to see exactly what, what it's going to be like. And to be honest, if you are sticking around long enough, depending on how quickly I'm going to get this all put together, which shouldn't be that long, but, uh, well, we'll find out. Because I'll put it on the timer grapher, obviously. Because I want to know as well. But, uh, yeah, those springs, I'm a little bit, mm, those springs are a bit sketchy, man. See, like even screws like this, they, they look really similar, but they're not, they're different. So if you're going to work on something like this, a, a chronograph, it's definitely super strongly. Ad oh, my alarm. Sorry, guys. It's definitely uh, advisable to uh, just put the screws back into the movement because you're going to get them washed anyway. And then at the end of the day, you're going to know exactly where that screw is supposed to go. So this screw is for the, uh, the click spring. We'll pop him out and then I can just put in the, uh, the click spring as well. It's r nothing fancy. It's uh, quite a straightforward uh, click spring if I obviously put it in the right way. And then what I will do is I will just nip him up a little bit before I adjust that spring just so he doesn't fly and then I can move him 
There you go. Nice seated. And then you can see how he goes. And you want to put a little bit of uh, grease on this with it being a metal on metal part. Easiest thing I do is just uh, use a tweezer or your screwdriver, just pull the spring back a little bit and then I just slide in a little bit of grease so that it's touched and that's done. And I also noticed that a screw has fallen out from the other side so I need to locate him and he is here for the one of the springs for the brake. So I'm going to just pop him back in because we're not going to be using any of these screws during this one because they're chronograph uh, chronograph screws for the chronograph springs that was good okay so that's in now we can continue with is this in focus no it's not yeah, that's about it. I can build up the train. So this train bridge, it consists of two parts. You have... Uh, first I put in the escape wheel. That went in really nice. See, that's nice. That's nice. I like that. before I put him in the right way. Well done, fool. It's quite a simple setup, but uh, it works. And like I said, I absolutely, I mean, you guys know it anyway, I absolutely adore this movement. It's the best chronograph movement as far as I'm concerned. Not everyone will agree, but as far as I'm concerned, it, it really is, it's awesome. It's super reliable. I love it that it's a, obviously that it's a hand wind and it just, yeah, it's like a, it's just like a, a workhorse. It's like a, a tank, absolutely awesome movement. Okay. Right. So as far as I'm aware, I've got, um, yeah, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. I'm going to do it. Let me... Man, this is even more difficult than I thought now, like under this scope. I've lost my train of thought. Before I put that down as well, I want to put this one in so it just keeps these secure. I need a shoe for 72. Don't be all. You guys seen this?
Come on, Mr. Escape. Usually I see this from above, but I'm not above. I have my camera angle completely different. Because <clears throat> the problem with having the uh, camera over at the top with the reflection, it's just too bright, so it's too hard to it's too hard to see. Come on, escape wheel. Find your home. So uh, tricky. I know it's the escape wheel. I can't see. thousand euro microscope and then I use like a three euro loop and I get it first time. It's super annoying actually. <clears throat> All these screws are the same as well apart from one. One has a little bit of a shorter head and that goes on the main uh, Train barrel, and if I believe, yeah, it's this one here, and he lives here. Also make sure that you keep checking it before you tighten everything up. Because the last thing you want to do is break something. Or have a fight with a mainspring. Yeah, I still can't get over those mainsprings.
I've seen something. Cool. Okay. Next. Because time is of the essence now. Before I oil this up, I want to just put in this uh, keyless works. So I'm going to put in the winding stem and the, sorry, the um, winding pinion and sliding pinion. 9350, 9354 is it? Increase that. So yeah, that's the other thing. Guys, have you heard of fake uh, subscribers on YouTube? Because, like I said, I was absolutely convinced, and I was right in the end, that I did get a shitload of fake subscribers, around 100, which uh, were removed in the end, obviously, but still, uh, not cool. And you guys are waffling on about some... What are you, what are you even talking about? The 7750. Nice movement, that. Very nice movement. But the, my only gripe with it is that I find the... Uh, I just... I know why it is the way it is, and, and it's fine, but... I have it on my Longines Hydro Conquest, but I just get a little bit disappointed how stiff the um, uh, pushes are. <laughs> no fear, K mate. No, I didn't mean it like I didn't mean you guys. I mean like like bots or something. Because, like I said, I, I genuinely believe that I had a load of uh, fake. Uh, I cannot see this. Where what I'm trying to do here. A lot of fake uh, subscribers that suddenly popped up in the space of literally about ten minutes. I had about a hundred subscribers. It didn't. It didn't make any logical sense to me. That's what I'm saying. I mean, you guys are legit, and I, I do appreciate each and every one of you. Thank you so much. I really do. Where would I be without you? On my ass watching Netflix being less productive. I'm just salty because I got banned from Amiga forums. Or Omega forums. I am super salty about it actually, but uh, don't tell anyone I said that. I just find it weird. Okay, let's build up these intermediates. Another thing as well with these movements, and I've seen it on two, where you have to be careful. This here, this brass piece where the end of the winding, uh, uh, the winding stem goes into, I've had it on two movements that people have sent where this has been completely sheared off. And uh, that's a really big problem because it's a fixed part of the, um, uh, of the movement, which is... Uh, yeah, it's a, that's a big problem. Not cool. So I'm adding a little grease for where the cannon uh, pinion is going to go because I'm going to pop that on now. Just a, just a, a little. And also a little 13 hundred also because once he's on he's on I 
and always advisable to put this on as well like um, before you put on a, a minute wheel or something because this way when you put him on you're just pushing him on and you're not hitting any other teeth you know whereas if I had this wheel this minute wheel on first like so if he was already on that would be a problem because maybe I would hit a tooth and, and, and break it and yeah that would immensely suck like a hell of a lot seriously it would not be fresh at all okay so nearly done yolk yolk spring and I want to add also a little <clears throat> that's far too much grease on the inside of the sliding pinion for where the yolk's going to sit and he will just live here like so with the wrong tweezers because I don't like those ones because they're old and he has the worst screw in the world I despise this screw because it has a weird oval head and surprisingly he's gone in rather nice which I didn't expect. What are you guys talking about now? Not surprising, I suppose. Twitter has tons of fake stuff. Exactly right, man. There's a lot of fake stuff on Twitter. And I'd be pissed too. It's very lame. It is very lame. It's not super fresh or super nice. Man, I'd had a shower. Before I had a shower, I was on my uh, YouTube statistical thing and I was looking at it and I saw how many subscribers I had. I went for a shower and I didn't spend a serious amount of time in there. And when I came out, I had around like 60 or 70 subscribers more. Now, as you can imagine, when I first saw this, I was superly excited and I was like, oh, finally, finally it's happened. YouTube are taking me seriously, blah, 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 blah. No, man, it was fake. But it was weird. It was two videos that suddenly pumped. And it was these two videos that, it, that the subscribers had all come from. The problem was, is that when I looked into the statistics, They'd not actually watched any of the video. They'd watched like the average rating was like about two, two, uh, 20 seconds or something stupid. It was absolutely pointless. Oh, well, thanks, Andy. That's, uh, that's really nice to know, man. I mean, I, I, do, I do take the channel seriously. I mean, it, I, I'm constantly thinking of like new ideas and, you know, what can I do now for the channel? You know, what can I improve? And... Sometimes I think I'm a little impatient and, and maybe that's also the problem like you know I look at some channels and and they take a lot longer to grow and maybe that maybe that is my problem that I'm also being not realistic or I'm being a bit impatient but then at the same time I also see some some channels and yeah like I said it, it's it's not it's not so much like about that uh, that I need to have like a gazillion subscribers but what I do believe is the subscribers are basically then passing on all of that information of what other people see on their pages as in my videos so to speak you know and uh, and that's that's the frustrating thing is that I don't feel that I get that and it yeah it's it it is it is disheart sometimes it can be disheartening when you spend a long time on a video and then YouTube just goes yeah I'm not gonna push that and you're like okay thanks bro I appreciate that Thanks, Elder. I really appreciate that. That's just made me feel all juice and warmy inside. I uh, will sleep easier tonight knowing that, my bro. Thank you so much. So uh, I feel suddenly blessed. But it's also like that on a live stream as well. I also find that the live streams end up doing better once it's finished. Because also you've got to understand that people have got lives, you know. And they don't want to watch a guy spending like 45 minutes trying to get an arbor into a... A damn uh, mainstream plate. I mean, for the amount of time that it's taken that, to the amount of time that now it's taken to build up the rest of the watch is, yeah, it's a little bit uh, bizarre when you think about it. So let's just pop you on. There you go. I mean, seriously, this is taken a hell of a lot faster. But I'm really curious about what that amplitude's going to be. We should have a wager. What's the amplitude going to be with these shoddy, uh, shoddy mainsprings? 
Are we going to have a good uh, good amplitude off the bat, or is it going to be absolutely diabolic? Because I'm curious as well. But we will find out in a few minutes. So, send and leave a spring on. Grease it up. Grease it up good. So usually what I do is, I actually do it before, to be honest. I'm telling a lie. I do it, I grease it before I put it on, but I got distracted because we were talking about the 15 people that are watching and, and how my life feels empty and that now. And it's all Elder's fault. So you all have to basically hold him personally responsible for this. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so there we have the... That's in. Wipe off the excess. And now I can put in the pallet fox. But why am I not getting any... There is a problem. Ah, oh, fuck. You know, this is the second time that I've done this. You know what I haven't done? I did this before once as well. And this is the problem also, like I said, with a live stream. And you guys haven't picked up on it. I have made a mistake. Well, it's not that I've made a mistake. I've just basically forgotten to put the ratchet wheel in. <laughs> oh, screw my life. Screw my life. So I've got to take off this big bridge. Uh, obviously, I can leave the other one on, which is fine. And then I can pop on the ratchet wheel. Why don't you guys tell me that I didn't put the damn ratchet wheel on? You're supposed to be watching. You're waffling onto yourselves. You guys need to create your own uh, YouTube channel so that you can basically uh, have your waffle. You didn't even tell me about the damn ratchet wheel that I've completely forgotten to put on. Which is unbelievably embarrassing at the same time. But I won't lie, it's not the first time. I've done it before. And it's a joke as well when you think about it because the thing's massive. And it's actually not the first time by far that I've uh, forgotten to do it. And annoyingly, I've already put on uh, this. It should go on underneath, actually. It should be fine because it's only thin. But let me add a little bit of 1300 to the top of that arbor. And like I said, this is also my own personal watch, so... It's not like it's uh, somebody else's who's paid for it. Thankfully, it does go on perfectly underneath. Because that would have been a pain in the backside, having to then obviously take off the, um, what you call it, the cannon pinion and everything again as well. Oh, and I need to oil up as well. That's also what I need to do. Uh, where are we? Where are we? Where are we? Where are we? How frustrating. Okay, let me just try and move this click out of the way. Do we get life? Yes, we get life. I can't believe you guys didn't tell me. Where's Eric? Why didn't you tell me, man? <laughs> He's not put the ratchet wheel in. We won't tell him. We'll wait until he finds it. Well, let's see if he figures it out. But like I said, it's not the first time that I've done it, man. I've, I've done it before. Like you get distracted or you're waffling on as well. And uh, yeah, it's uh, not the first time at all. I have done it before, man. But thankfully, it's not a uh, super hard to get it. It's a problem for me when I make a mistake. I don't like it. I don't like making mistakes. But it shows, though, that anybody obviously can make a mistake. So the trick is, oh, sorry, not the trick, but the important thing is recognizing that you've made a mistake 
and obviously not spending half an hour trying to work out why you've made a mistake. Okay, I just want to oil this up quickly. So, if I can bash this through, get you some focus. I'm really conscious that you guys have not got focus. Nothing even on that. can do the rest of the train. If you guys can see, I hope. just want to wipe off this because I felt on the pivot it hit it and I don't want it on the pivot and let's do the other side oh man fiasco Thanks, man. Exactly, it is. And especially in a live situation. Ironically, though, I'd always seem to have my problems more in a live situation, but then at the same time, I'm entertaining you guys. So there's that. So basically, it's all your fault. How's that for responsibility? Oh yeah, and you'll be happy to know as well, on a plus side, I've already cleaned and fixed and dropped up the pallet forks. <laughs> Thank God. <laughs> Let me swap, um, what you call it, movement holders. So I can pop this in this one. Avocado, it's your fault. <laughs> yeah. It is. I will take no responsibility for this whatsoever. Okay, pallet cock. I need a beer, man. You know, the messed up thing is, I don't even have any in the house, I've just realized. No beers for me. Someone buy me a beer. That was a joke, by the way, I don't want money. I just, it was a, it was a hypothetical thing. I would love, I would love it if the doorbell rang and there was a beer there. I'm just putting this in a little bit first. I'm not tightening it up fully yet because I just want to make sure that that's engaged, which I believe it is. Well, it's winding. I suppose that's a positive thing. 
All right, let's oil this uh, bad boy. Man, nearly there, nearly there. Look at the time. Can't believe you guys are still here, that's amazing. I'm actually baffled that you guys are still here. Okay, we have movement. All right, let me see if I can zoom in for you guys on this, because I'm gonna need to zoom in as well. I think you guys can see that. Super steady hand. And I'll wipe off the oil and then move it five times to engage. And repeat. What I always do is as well as when I dip the oiler in, I wipe off one side completely. Because it's uh, otherwise I find it's just uh, it's far too much. Somebody's message me. Yeah, I agree, mate. I really like them as well. It still always baffles me for something that's so small and how sharp they are. Like when you see them under the scope, like how, yeah, just how the, how the cut is just so sharp. All right, I think we're good. But, um, Man, I'm really curious what this is going to be under this amplitude. At this stage, I think I'd just be happy if it actually runs. <laughs> Oh, I forgot uh, one thing, but actually it doesn't matter. It was just, there's a big screw that is a dial spacer screw, but uh, I will put that on in the, uh, on for the uh, chronograph side anyway. I'm not gonna do it now, there's no need. There's no need. Let's just pop the balance on. Let's see if this thing actually runs. If you guys see that. Well, it's, it's moving. Oh, let's put a full wind in it. It's all your fault, bro. You jinxed it by saying there was 15 people or something. I hold you madly responsible. All right, there's a full wind at this spring. So what are we, what are we betting for the amplitude on this then? Balance, uh, balance wheel doesn't look too bad to be fair. I wanna know, what do you think? What do you guys reckon the amplitude is going to be? I'll plug it in. I 
I reckon I'm gonna be I'm gonna be thinking it's gonna be amazing if it's more than 220 considering the state of that spring. Two eighty two. But I got some serious beat error that I have to sort out. But the amplitude is 282. <laughs> I didn't expect that, if I'm honest. I expected a hell of a lot less than that. <laughs> Seriously, I did not expect that at all. Right, what time are we on? Man, this video has gone on for a long time. Okay, 282. Uh, beat error is coming at 1.8, so I need to adjust it, but I will adjust that later. I'm not going to bother until it's like the oils have settled in and everything, man. But I still am absolutely gobsmacked at 282 amplitude with that spring. Damn. Okay. Guys, I'm going to call it a day. This has gone on a hell of a lot longer than I actually expected it would. I super appreciate that you guys hung around, which, man, I wouldn't have hung around. Seriously, it's gone forever, especially that mainspring. It's ridiculous. And the fact that I've got two already now sitting here that I need to find out what to do with them. But, uh, yeah, it's been a learning curve for me as well in regards to uh, using this microscope in a live situation, especially with this camera. It's completely new. A little challenging, I must admit, but it always is when it's live as well because you're not in your own zone and you're not in your own comfort area. And I think some people don't understand that is when you're doing it live, it's, yeah, it's not easy, man. <laughs> it's not easy at all. So, yeah. Yes, exactly, Tom. Uh, let it run for uh, yeah at least 24 hours. Uh, let the oils all settle in and everything. And uh, uh, yeah. Oh, thanks, Eric, man. And listen, I really appreciate that super chat, man. I wasn't expecting that whatsoever. That's uh, really kind of you, man. And um, yeah, I wouldn't say that it was the awesomest of stream, but uh, you know how it goes anyway, man. <laughs> sometimes things work, sometimes things don't. But at least the watch is running, so that's the good thing. But um, yeah, it is just annoying. Guys, uh, keep an eye on the channel, and uh, obviously I'll be dropping more stuff soon. And maybe I will do the live stream for the uh, chronograph part of this, because it sounds like it would be harder, but to be honest, it is just like a jigsaw puzzle. So yeah, I might just finish uh, and do that as a live stream and then just complete the watch. So yeah. Okay guys, I'm gonna sign off. Until next time, take it easy.